Amazon said that their new Echo Buds would be going up against directly the AirPods. I mean, at their slightly cheaper price point and with fairly impressive active noise cancellation, you might be tempted to go with the Echo Buds. I mean, if you want active noise cancellation on your AirPods, you're going to have to shell out $250 for the AirPods Pro. But unfortunately, I just can't recommend the Echo Buds because they fail pretty hard when it comes to the basics for everyday carry truly wireless earbuds. Now, at $130, the Echo Buds seem pretty attractive. They're $30 less than the entry-level AirPods, which I personally recommend, because I think the $200 AirPods with wireless charging case are pointless until there's an iPhone that supports power sharing. And the AirPods Pro, which have active noise cancellation and a transparency mode like the Echo Buds, retail for $120 more. But still, like I said, I can't recommend the Echo Buds if you're looking for a pair of everyday carry truly wireless earbuds. If you're an iPhone user, your best bet are still AirPods, and if you're an Android user, I'll leave some good options down below that I highly recommend. Whenever I'm looking for a pair of truly wireless earbuds, I'm looking for maximum comfort and maximum convenience. And the carrying case plays a really big role in that. And unfortunately, the Echo Buds carrying case is something that I would have expected to have seen in 2018. This carrying case has a pretty large footprint and is pretty thick compared to AirPods and some third-party earbuds that I commonly recommend to Android users. So the Echo Buds larger carrying case is just very noticeable when you have it stored in your pocket. But one of the biggest problems with this carrying case is that it charges via a micro USB port instead of a USB-C port like on most other recently released truly wireless earbuds. Now, obviously, if you're an iPhone user, AirPods are great because you can charge them with the same cable you charge your phone with. So even if this case used a USB-C port, you would still have to use a separate cable. But the reason USB-C is still a big deal is because it allows for faster charging, it's reversible, and if you're an Android user, you would be able to charge your phone and earbuds with the same cable like iPhone users can with AirPods. Now, the Echo Buds larger carrying case could be excused if they offered you an above average combined battery life. But that's not the case. The Echo Buds have a combined battery life of 20 hours, which is average for wireless earbuds in late 2019. The earbuds themselves can go for five straight hours, just like AirPods, and the case can supply an additional three full charges. Overall, battery life on the Echo Buds is good, but it's not all that impressive in relation to the size of their case. But one of my biggest pet peeves about the Echo Buds and their case is that with frequent regularity, when I put the earbuds back into their case, the earbuds just don't shut down and disconnect from my phone, leading me to come back to dead earbuds on multiple occasions, or at the very least having to manually disconnect the Echo Buds from my phone on a regular basis. Now this is something that never happens on AirPods and I know is a first world problem, but it is pretty annoying. Now, when it comes to the earbuds themselves, these are in-ear earbuds. And regarding comfort, these earbuds fit very well, but I do recommend that you use the included ear fins. Since these earbuds are so dense, I did notice that they like to wiggle out a lot without the ear fins. Now, something to keep in mind is that these in-ear earbuds go in a little deeper into your ear canal than the AirPods Pro do. They don't go in as deep as the Powerbeats Pro or definitely the Sony WF-1000XM3, but these are a pair of earbuds that you just don't forget that they're there. So again, this plays into what I say about maximum comfort and maximum convenience. But this is probably just my bias talking because personally, I'm not the biggest fan of in-ear earbuds for extended use. I'm actually still getting used to using the AirPods Pro for hours on end. And that's why I still really like the normal AirPods. To me, they're the most comfortable earbuds out there for use for hours and hours and hours. Now, when it comes to Bluetooth connectivity, these earbuds are using Bluetooth 5.0. But more importantly, each earbud establishes a connection with your phone. So if you just want to use one earbud at a time, you can use either one. You don't got to worry about selecting the correct earbud, like on some older or cheaper truly wireless earbuds using a Hero and Sidekick setup. And also, these earbuds have zero latency across the board when watching videos or movies on either an iPhone or Android device, which is a very good thing. But when it comes to actual sound quality, that's another story. These earbuds sound bad, and they're perhaps the worst sounding earbuds I've heard in a while. 
The mids on these earbuds are basically non-existent and they have a whole bunch of bass to cover it up. Even if you go into these earbuds adjustable EQ and raise the mids all the way up, they're still super hard to hear. So overall, these earbuds just sound very shallow and there's barely any detail or instrument separation to them. So that's just another reason why I just can't recommend the Echo Buds. They just sound really bad. Now, something that I will admit is that the active noise cancellation on the Echo Buds actually give the active noise cancellation on the AirPods Pro a run for their money. The Echo Buds do a really good job of blocking out constant low frequency sounds. But unfortunately, the microphone array on the Echo Buds really likes to pick up a lot of wind noise. So if you use these earbuds while outdoors with their active noise cancellation turned on, they're gonna pick up a lot of wind noise, which is a very big deal because the AirPods Pro pick up basically zero wind noise, which is what you want. But also, the ambient mode on these earbuds isn't all that great either. Now, even though you can actually go in and adjust how much ambient sound these earbuds let in, which is something you can't do with the AirPods Pro, the ambient mode on these earbuds have a constant hissing in the background, which is very noticeable when watching videos or movies with these earbuds. And again, the ambient mode on these earbuds really likes to pick up a lot of wind noise when used outdoors. But more importantly, the ambient mode on these earbuds just sounds very artificial. And when it comes to the microphone on these earbuds for phone calls, they just don't sound all that great. There's a lot of amplification going on, and sometimes the microphone on these earbuds does like to peak. But more importantly, I can't help but notice that there's a lot of static in the background. Because honestly, the microphone on the Echo Buds just can't compete with the microphones found on the AirPods and AirPods Pro. So overall, I just can't recommend that you go out and get the Echo Buds. Between their large carrying case, their use of micro USB, their very poor sound quality, their basic active noise cancellation microphone array that really likes to pick up a lot of wind noise, and fairly average sounding microphone for phone calls, these earbuds feel outdated already. If you're an iPhone user, you're better off just getting the $160 AirPods 2, and if you really want active noise cancellation, then go with the AirPods Pro. Even though, yeah, they are pretty expensive, you're not going to regret it. And if you're an Android user, there are so many better options out there. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video. So hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any other products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below. And you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.